Hello traders everywhere, Adam Hewison here coming to you from the digital studios of Market Club. It's Monday the 19th of August and we've got a lot of big box retailers reporting their earnings this week. We've got JCPenney tomorrow, Tuesday, and Sears coming on Thursday. We'll be looking at these two stocks today and I'll show you which one I think is a better buy. Or the shaping up, I shouldn't say a better buy, but shaping up. Look, last week was the worst week in 14 months for the markets. We actually showed you how using the trade triangles you would have been out of the Dow for sure and staying in the NASDAQ which is up back quite, actually quite a bit today. It's up 16 right now. So let's go right to, to our portfolio and let's look at the two stocks we talked about, JCPenney right here. You can already see that the trade triangles are already down on the weekly and the monthly and this is just being a shipwreck of a stock and you can see right now we, we're making new lows here which is not good. You had Bill Ackman get out of the market, but there's absolutely no reason to even look at this stock right now. I want to see a market making a turn before I get long. So let's look at our next stock. So this is JCPenney going to report earnings expected to lose more, but maybe not as much as they first thought. Ackman's off the board. He's been, he owns 17.7% .7 of the stock. He's going to sell it. And uh, Bill Ackman stay with hedge fund trading. Don't get involved with these big box stores. So here's Sears. Sears Holding owned by another hedge fund manager. But the difference here in this stock, and I want to show you, is this. I'm going to just put a close only chart on. And I'm going to take my trend line indicator right here. So you click on here, it shows you a little kind of yellow box here. From the highest point, move this down and look at how perfectly this matches. This just hits, sort of hits all, all of the spaces you want to hit. And it would appear as though it would appear as though it's going to uh, break out of this somewhere along the line here. Not right now, but somewhere along the line here. Now, the other thing I like about this is very similar to Apple. It has a double bottom. So what we're looking for in this stock would be for this market to break over this line and really close over this high here and possibly this high. So once it did that, I think you could say that this market's on its way. But on a triangle level, we have our triangles all negative on this market. So it's not there yet. Wait, 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 be patient. Wait for this to turn around. Now this could go on for another month. It may never break over this trend line. But the reality is only get long this stock when it closes over this trend line. That's the key thing. And this is a trend line going back look where it's going back to. It's going back to April of 2007, so it's a long-term trend line. This is just being, Sears has just been going down, 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 down. So that's something to look at. That's what we're looking at at Sears. So let's clear the screen and let's go to our next market. This is the weekly chart, by the way. And let's go to our next market. This is the Dow. And I'm going to put a daily chart on here and also our candlestick charts and we'll just do it for the last six months because that's really that's all that's interesting. Here's the monthly still positive. The weekly kicked in right here. Now see how you using these triangles it gets you out of the market. We've been talking about being out of the market and that's from the 15405. Now that's you know 400 points away and I think the other thing you want to look at right now in the Dow is this. This is what we're looking for. So clicking on to our Fibonacci which is right here and there's the little yellow box telling you it's a Fibonacci retracement. We're going from going from the highs right here down to this recent lows right there and we'll close this into like three months. We'll get a much closer look. So you can see right now that we're really in this zone here, this sort of 50%, 61.8% zone where this market should begin to stabilize and I think it's going to present an opportunity. Now two things you want to look at of course are the MACD, if you want to look at this right here, you want to look at the trade triangles, of course, but you want this one to go. When that happens, then you want to be a buyer. And it would be nice to see this sort of the momentum begin to pick up a little bit so we not keep going down, 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 down. But the other area we're looking at right now, we're right in that zone, Fibonacci zone, where the market should begin to find support. So moving on to the next index, and that's going to be the S&P 500. Uh, pretty much the same there. We got out of that several days ago, but nonetheless, this is still in a corrective pattern. may take a little while longer to correct. Now, the one in thing that's interesting going on to the, S the NASDAQ is look at the trade triangles. They're both being green. They never turned down 
too red. So you've always been in this market. It's putting in a good performance today. Uh, it's up about 16, as I mentioned to you, up about about half a percent. But you also have this doji, this cross here. If it closes up here, that's going to be a pretty strong indication that this, in fact, the 3600 level is, in fact, a bottom. So moving along to our next market, and that's crude oil. Crude oil is just really sort of teetering on this top. Uh, we, you know, we talked about this before. I think any close over 108, 20, 25, somewhere like that is going to really push this market into hyperdrive on the upside. We're looking for, obviously, we've got what we said before, a double bottom here. We're just flattening out on the MACD, and over here, if we see a, you know, a big update like this, just get involved because it's going to keep going higher. The momentum is going to be enough to push this market, I think, quite a bit higher, possibly up to. I would say maybe the 114, 115 area. So let's see how that plays out. But you've got a 65 reading here. All you're waiting for is this trade triangle right here to go green. That one to turn green. And then you pull the trigger and get long. So let's move on. Here's gold. Gold is, uh, again, pulling back. Not to say it's not going to go higher. We've had a lot of people saying, well, you know, what do we think on gold? Well, look at the weekly kicked in here. So right at 1296, which is almost $80, $90 away, uh, we first changed our intermediate term trend to positive. Now, if you put in our week dailies, you can see the last buy signal we had on the daily was here at 13.15. So that's $60 ago. That's $6,000 a contract. So again, it's being consistent and trading with the trend. So here was the buy point right here, and that was at 12.96. The exit point was right here. Let me just uh, take this off here. The exit point was right here at 13.13. So you would have made, let's call it $18, $19 on that, that trade. You stayed out of the market until you came in here, and that was at $13.15. So you basically got back in when the market's momentum started going up, and that's a key thing. Trade with that market momentum. It's very, very important. So moving on to our next market, the euro dollar. Pretty much the same thing there. The 134 level is very, very key. You can see how we keep sort of hitting that level and really not going anywhere per se, just right here, just 134 seems to be a, a blockade right now for this market. So that's about it for today. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Every success using Market Club and our trade triangles. I'll see you tomorrow. You can find Adam Hewison as a regular contributor on Bloomberg, Business News Network, CNBC, and Fox Business News.